Hey y'all, it's your girl Kimberly D and I am back with another video and I wanted to come on and just relax a little bit. You know, it's the end of my work week and yeah, I just want to relax a little bit. So we are not out on the patio. We are in the office, the girl shed, the she shed, the girl cave, whatever you want to call it. That's where we are on today. And yeah, just wanted to come on and just talk with y'all a little bit while I try and, you know, relax. <laughs> come down off the work week and just relax a little bit. And I've been thinking about this topic for a while. And I've been dealing with this topic for a while. It's been, it's been at least 10 years, 10 years that I've been dealing with this topic. And I thought if I'm dealing with it, I know a lot of other people are dealing with it as well. And I'm just, I'm trying to get relaxed. See, I got my, got my Kimberly mug. My Kimberly, can y'all see it? Got my Kimberly mug. I believe our goddaughter purchased this from Florida on one of her many trips. And um, yeah, I appreciate it. And in here, I have some tea. Um, what kind of tea? I don't even remember what kind of tea, but I also have my um, bladder rack sea moss tincture. Um, let's see here. What's the name? that we order it from. I think it's four cycles, four cycles. I don't know. I'll put it down in the description. If you guys would like to order some, it's the Bladderac Sea Moss Tincture. And then while I'm talking about that, I'm not sure if I should add it with tea or not. But um, while I'm talking about that, I also have my Hibiscus Sea Moss Gummies. And this is by Tracy Shop. Can y'all see that? I don't know if you can see it. I don't think y'all could see it. Anyway, I'll put that down in the description as well. So those, these are sea moss, sea moss, hibiscus sea moss gummies. And you take three of those a day. You can order those from Tracy Shop. And you can, I believe it's on Instagram. T-R-E-E -E shop under, I, I'll let y'all know. I'll put it in the, in the description. Y'all can order some of those from her as well. And I guess one of the reasons that I take, I don't take so much sea moss, but um, I've always taken the tincture for at least the last year, but I've been off and on. So I'm trying to get more regular. And I just recently started drinking hibiscus tea because there's a lot of um, health benefits in that. My primary reason for drinking the hibiscus tea was to help lower my cholesterol, lower my cholesterol, because your girl done been told if she don't get that cholesterol down, she gonna end up on the medication. And I don't want one more medication. I need to get rid of the one medication that I do have. And so, um. You know, I don't want to go on the cholesterol medication or the thyroid medication, which is the primary reason that I started with the um, sea moss in the first place. My doctor tried to or recommended that I go on to thyroid medication. And my husband, who does a lot with natural medicine, this, you know, he, he said, no, let's try the sea moss first. And so they were skeptic. I was skeptic too, <laughs> but I said I trust his opinion. And you know, we did it for six weeks and we went back and we did blood work and they could see a major difference. So they said, you know, if you're gonna be faithful to that, continue on, but if not, then we're gonna have to do the medicinal route. So that's what I'm I'm doing. I'm getting on my sea moss and I'm hunkering down and you know, I need to do a lot of other things to get my health in, in, 
in the right direction. Losing weight is primary. That's primary. You lose the weight, you lose a lot of the other issues, you know, but you have to just be disciplined. I, I've determined that it's not motivation because motivation may get you started, but it won't keep you there. It's discipline. Discipline will keep you there. You know, I said I can get up and do something for 20 some years. <laughs> Faithfully, I can definitely get up and do something every day that's going to better my own personal self um, directly without, you know, you know, it affecting or if I can get up for that for years and years and years and, you know, do something that blesses somebody else, I can get up and do something that's going to directly bless myself. That's what I'm trying to say. So just building that discipline. And I understand that it takes repetition. You do something over and over and over and over and over. It just becomes who you are. It becomes what you do. So that's that's the goal. It's just to build some discipline so that I can be a better me, be a healthier me and be around for the long haul, if the Lord say the same. But um, yeah, that was one of the main things I wanted to talk about, but hey, it is what it is. You know, it's, in, it's important as well. Your thyroid pretty much controls your entire being, your body, regulates everything. So that's pretty important and pretty um, major as well to get that in order. Um, but what I did want to come on here and talk to y'all about, um, was the things that happen when you turn 40, when you get close to 40. Y'all tell me what they are. There's two things that I've personally experienced that happens when you start nearing that age of 40. And the first one is these big things on my face. These glasses these are my um latest pair that i'm still trying to get used to i just got them what i went and picked them up i picked them up first two weeks ago and no mm -mm, i could not see i don't know what happened between the exam and the shipment to get them sent off but something went wrong and i could not see so they had to redo them and in the meantime, I took my prescription and went over to Costco and y'all saw that video and picked up me some, some frames because Costco, I have your stuff back within a week, week and a half. These took like almost three weeks. So, you know, I picked them up and I'm trying to get used to them, but I love the Costco frames. Yes, they are a fraction of the cost of what I paid for these, but they feel good. I just love them. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing um, designer going forward. We'll see. But anyway, that's one of the things that I noticed that happens when um, when you start <laughs> near the age of 40. And the optometrist, um, she, she said, yeah, when you hit 40, something happens, something changes within your eyesight. And most often it requires that you start wearing glasses. And I started wearing glasses around around that age, but I know that um, my occupation had a lot to do with it. Staring at a computer screen for 10 hours a day will do a number on your eyes. So I know that that had a lot to do with it. But also, um, I guess it's just one of those things that happen. And I'm pretty sure that there are some natural remedies, some foods, some different things like that, that you can take that will keep that from happening. So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what I personally experienced in my journey through life. But um, I started wearing them, but I didn't wear them every day. And that may have aided in me having to wear them because exactly what's happened now is what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want to have to wear them every day. I would see my husband at bedtime, take them off, put them on the nightstand. In the morning, that's the first thing he picks up. And I didn't want that for myself. I didn't want to be 
re I didn't want to be chained to something outside of myself. I didn't want to have to depend on something outside of myself. But here I am. I'm telling y'all, I can see, but not good. I cannot read a thing. Everything just becomes blurry. So, yeah, these are my best friend. They, the last thing I see at night and the first thing I see in the morning. So, like I always say, it is what it is. Your eyes. So, if y'all ain't there yet, take care of your eyes. And I've, um transitioned over maybe the last four four to five years into progressive lenses and so i asked them what are progressive exactly in my opinion they're just a fancy name for some bifocals because you don't have the line like bifocals it's bifocal so the line separates the top from the bottom and and um progressive they just kind of progress you don't see the line. But anyway, the primary thing that I wanted to talk about tonight was the one thing that has affected my life majorly and has, you know, caused a lot of change, a lot of change in my life. And that's getting older. <laughs> and that thing called menopause that old girl called menopause creep around the corner and she show up and the crazy part about it all is that when it first started happening to me i had no clue what was happening to me and you know i didn't really think to go to the doctor i just you know i had just started started my mary Kay business and if you guys truly know me i am an introvert i am so an introvert i do well with people um i do i do well but i really would prefer to be in my own space doing me but i started my mary Kay business and you know back then it would require that you know you go and do the facials and the classes and you're in and out of people's homes and strangers people you don't even know it was so amazing you know i turned a profit i enriched so many women's lives in the process with just the team that i built and just the team that i was on it was amazing but i noticed maybe after a year no 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 it wasn't a year. It couldn't have been a year. It had to be a few months. I noticed that when I would go on appointments, all of a sudden, I would get like this. It felt like, it felt like I was in a sauna, but a dry sauna, not moisture or anything. It just felt like a heat wave would come over me and I would immediately start sweating and sweat would just drop. And <laughs> now my body, just my face, would just start dropping. And, you know, I'm in full face of makeup. Because back then, you know, I would not leave the house without a beat face. So full face of makeup. You know, thank goodness for Mary Kay products. Even through all the sweat, it did not run. But, you know, they would notice that I'm sweating. And, and I've had a lot of them ask me, are you okay? Do you need me to lower the temperature <laughs> And I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? Am I that nervous? You know, because introvert, shy girl, you know, y'all might not believe it, but that's, you know, who I, who I was. I won't say who I am anymore, but maybe still a little bit. But, you know, I was like, what is wrong with me? Why am I sweating? And like literally sweat dropping down my face. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And I would just tell them, you know what? I'm fine. I'll be okay. And so that, and, and literally after a few moments, I would be okay. And I was like, whoa, that was weird. Okay. Continue moving forward. And that would happen often, like often. And I was like, okay, that's weird. But you know, I would get these waves of just hot and i was like clearly i cannot be going through menopause because i am too young for that because it started for me at 39 
I was like, I am too young for that. So that's not what's happening. And you know, I, <coughs> excuse me, I've experienced it um, with my mom, you know, when I was in my early, late twenties, early thirties, she would come over and she would tell me, oh, I got to drop the AC. I got to." And I was like, listen, you got to put some coins on there. You know, but she, you know, that was a little joke, joke. But, you know, she would say, I am burning up. And I was like, what is wrong with this lady? She always hot. Like, just out of nowhere, she hot. You know, so I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. But, um... Yeah, I was like, okay, we really didn't talk about it. It wasn't something that we really talked about. I just kind of remember that. And, you know, eventually she told me it was menopause. But we, you know, it wasn't something you talk about. We didn't have family meetings or, you know, girl chats or anything like that in regards to that subject. So you just kind of figure it out on your own, I guess. Which is why we're having this conversation. Which is why my sister and I have decided that we will be, you know, adding that to the girl girl gatherings that we have with our family that we do now because of what we didn't do prior to, you know. So we're kind of changing, you know, progression, progress, progression. We're changing things as we, you know, you, what what do they say? You do better, you know better, you do better. Something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. However, um, yeah, it started with um, the sweating. It started with uh, just out of nowhere, feeling like somebody threw you in the oven and you can't, you can stick your head in the freezer and it's not gonna help. You just have to, you have to go through it until it passes. Then, what what happened next i don't it was so long ago i can't hardly remember everything that happened step by step but i do remember night sweats that may be the next thing that took place that i recognize because there's a lot of symptoms and you just may not catch every single one of them it's just probably the bigger ones are the ones that affect you the most but i remember the night sweats mm, my husband can tell y'all about them night sweats <laughs> covers off covers on covers off covers off <laughs> then you have to do that thing where you kick the cover off and you have you know the covers on but one leg is out and so that kind of helps regulate your body temperature and i find myself doing that even today sometimes but you know the night sweats horrible you wake up literally drenched it is horrible and you have to find a certain, you know, material that you wear to bed because if not, mm -mm, don't wear, don't wear no silk, no satin. You gonna be glued to them. <laughs> you gonna be glued to them. You better go get you some light cotton. But um, the night sweats. What else? Y'all, I'm laughing, but it's for real. It's for real. It ain't really even funny. It's for real. It'll have you yeah it get real but what are some of the other things um mind fog brain fog that's what it's called brain fog it's like for real like what was i just thinking what was i gonna do what was i brain fog that's real um what are some of the other things um, mood swings. Oh, 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 we, oh, we mood swings. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> you don't even know why. You just be. You just are. It's like mood swings. Um, one of the things that I found helps with that is um, essence of flower. Flower of essence. It, it one or the other. I'm not sure which one goes first, but I found that that helps a lot with that. I mean, there's a lot of um, natural things out on the market. There's a lot of medicinal things. It's just whichever route you choose to take or do both. You know, whatever it is that works for you. You just work with your physician and figure those things out or work with your naturopathic doctor, which is also your physician, whichever way you want to um, go with that. But there are so many there's so many there's a lot of 
um, very personal things that take place that affect you when you're going through menopause. There's a lot of sexual things that affect you when you're going through menopause. Um, what else? What else? Y'all tell me in the comments. Y'all drop it in the comments. What are some of the symptoms that you've experienced um, or have you started? You know, what are some of the things that you're doing if you have started to kind of combat a lot of the symptoms and the things that you're doing? Do you experience side effects, negative, any negative side effects in regards to them? Because at the end of the day, we have to be a community. We have to be a community that's willing to open up and be transparent about some of the things that are plaguing us. You know, even something, I won't even call this small. I won't even call it small. It's just something that people just don't talk about. It's almost like this um, unspoken thing that you're, you're gonna go through. <laughs> the majority of women that I know go through it, but it's not spoken. It's not talked about. And I don't understand that because if we talk about it, we can help one another. You know, maybe somebody else won't have to go through what I went through if they had the information. And it's not just coming from their physician because a lot of people like me, they don't rush right to the doctor when, you know, um, they start having these inferno spells. And everywhere you go, you got to keep a fan with you or, you know, you have to prepare for this thing because mm -mm, if you don't know what's going on with your body, it can drive you crazy. There are so many other, um, there are so many other symptoms and things like that. I'm just not thinking of them right off, off the top of my head because thank God I'm on the end of it. And when I did mention it to my mom, she said, oh, it can last 10 years. <laughs> I said, you have got to be kidding me. Ain't no way I can make it through this 10 years because I'm barely making it through it, you know, day by day. But it did. <laughs> it lasted 10 years and counted. I'm telling y'all, I am not lying. But it has, it lightened up. The load has truly lightened and, um, I'm grateful for it. It's so crazy that when I first started seeing the doctor about it, they did my blood work. <laughs> this lady gonna tell me I had a brain tumor. <laughs> I said, lady, for real, that my blood work told you that? And she said, oh, but don't worry about it because it's nothing that we haven't seen before and we give you a medication and it shrinks it and you're fine. Mm -mm. Nope not gonna be able to do that so you know what i did i went and got a second opinion they did more blood work and determined that it was full menopause <laughs> and she because she said it could not be menopause because i was too young because i was too young and in place of that she wanted me to take whatever she had to shrink it and then she wanted to put me on birth control because I, I wasn't having regular cycles either. So she wanted to put me on birth control. And I said, no, no, ma'am. Nope, we took care of that a long time ago. No, ma'am, my baby will be 24 on the 24th. We not doing birth control. So that wasn't an option for me. So thankfully I went and saw a different physician and he was able to hit the nail on the head. And we kind of went from there, but I'm telling y'all, y'all gotta, y'all gotta give us some space, <laughs> some space. Men, you know, I just pray for y'all. When your wife, your woman, your mate, whatever, go starts the process and it's going through, I pray for y'all. I pray for them, but I pray for y'all too, because a lot of men don't understand it. A lot of men don't have the patience for it. And, you know, I'm grateful that we had a, we had some bumps in the road. I'm not going to lie, but I have a very understanding, patient, loving husband that he with me, rock with me to the wheels fall off. So, you know, we just kind of rolled through it. But yeah, um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to open up dialogue in regards to that. 
and just let y'all know that y'all are not alone <laughs> and there's help out there there is support out there and you are not misunderstood you are not going crazy ain't nothing wrong with you you just got a little something going on you know with the hormones so yeah i just kind of wanted to get that dialogue started and just you know maybe there's somebody out there who are they're experiencing these symptoms but they don't know what's going on and they you know haven't gone to the doctor not sure what to say when they get to the doctor you know i'm here holla at your girl you know we can talk further about it leave leave your information in the comments let me know you know how this topic has um affected your life and the lives of the ones around you but for now i am about to sign off and go see what my boo is doing and see what we getting into for the rest of the evening so i will talk to y'all later peace out see you when i see you